apparently we are dealing with a nationwide lumber shortage right now, which means we are off to our third store this morning to try and get everything we need for this deck. It took three stores, but we have everything. Uh, it's a bit of a weird experience seeing uh, all the supplier shelves just look bare. Um, but it sounds like it's going to last for a while, so we'll have to just kind of keep that in mind. But like I said, we have everything now. Let's head back to site. Let's get this deck started. Alright, lumber's all in the back, and I should also mention we have a patio. So we attach these little packers on the back to our ledger board just to raise it off, raise it off the wall just a hair and that allows any moisture that gets behind to dry out and prevent future problems down the road to your home. Alright so my ledger board is just tacked in place for now and you'll also notice that I made sure my packers were skinny enough to still allow this drip edge that was previously installed to overhang my ledger board. So that should stop the majority of water from going behind. That packer, it's just kind of a second layer of mitigants, if you will. Mitig mitigants? Mitigation. Second layer of mitigation. So I typically like to do the layout for my ledger board on the ground, but because I'm dealing with a two-piece ledger here, I chose to do it on the wall and that way I can make sure my span is nice and continuous. I like to square up my deck early on in the very very early stages of building so in this case I have my beam my ledger and my two other joists and that's all that's attached together so it's one toenail in each corner and that allows me to pivot the whole deck and square it up so to do this I'm gonna measure from the house outward as well as at an angle and all of my measurements should be equal the angle should be equal and the ones out from the house should be equal then my deck should be square as I'm setting out my joists I'm making sure to crown them and I want that crown all facing the same direction, meaning that slight bow in the wood to be facing upward. This will make leveling all the joists far easier and installing the decking easier as well. Once all of my deck joists are toenailed in place, I'll come back and put a joist hanger under each joist. I'm also making sure to use the correct hardware. In this case, it's a very specific nail designed to be inserted into these joist hangers. So these particular joist hangers have these little tabs that allow you to whack them into the ledger board or anything for that matter before you start putting the nails in. Makes them stay in place. It's gotta be over 30 degrees out there and I need a break out of the sun for a bit because it is just beating down in that backyard. And believe it or not, the tool trailer, the giant metal box with tool trailer is the coolest place right now. But that brings up a good point. Uh, a couple weeks ago or a couple videos ago when I put out the tool trailer tour, I had a few of my followers on the blog website. So if you don't know about that, we do have a blog at thehomestead.com. Uh, they reached out and asked, you know, you never mentioned what size your tool trailer is. Well, my tool trailer is a 7x12 Vino. But the most important aspect of my tent or my tool trailer is that it is six and a half feet tall on the inside and that was an absolute must for me. I had to be able to walk in and out of it without having to duck. 
Uh, thinking of building out one for yourself, that's the size of mine. Alrighty, time to get back to work. So now that all of our main joists are fixed down, it's time to go in and start doing all the, whoa, it just smacks you when you get around that corner. Time to go back in and start doing all the bracing or the nogs in between everything and start setting up for the actual finish of what the top decking is gonna look like. So in this case, it's not gonna be that complicated. We're just gonna do a picture frame around the outside and then have horizontal boards going all the way around the inside. But that means a little bit of extra framing on each end for that picture frame and a little bit of extra framing for some stability. here with this board is forming the first section of our frame and now it's not cut but it is sitting where it is going to finish and the reason we're going to do that is that we can bump every other board that we install into this one there and not have to make every single cut and then once they're all done over there we can set the track saw down and cut everything at once good morning everybody sun is shining again welcome back to site so you'll notice this morning i started off by fixing our first deck board in place and i did that for a few reasons one, I wanted to trim the end at this side because the track saw won't make it all the way to the house. And two, we're working with a gas line over there and I wanted the notch to be as small as possible. So this meant ripping the board down by about an inch to tuck it in so we don't have a giant U-notch out of the deck. But now we're ready to start laying our deck boards out, which this part goes rather fast and makes the whole thing kind of start coming together. So you'll notice that I left all of the end of my joists long and uncut. And that's because when you buy them from the store, they're not always the exact same length as you can see by that second last one out there. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to trim all of them to the exact length so that I end with a full deck board every time. So the first step to build out this frame or this picture frame around the deck is going to be to trim off the length or that extra overhang on the other side of the deck. And sun smacking me. So we're going to grab the track saw and get that cut off.
is done. Corners look sharp. Now let's trim off those joists and get the rim board on, and then we can start working on the railing. Af after lunch, I'm going to eat while I still have some shade left. Just in time for lunch. Another Scott Brown video. If you guys don't subscribe to his channel, he's a New Zealand carpenter. Awesome, awesome channel. I highly suggest you subscribe. So the weather's good in some respects. It's very sunny, no rain. It's a little bit windy. With the deck surface complete, we can now start installing the posts for our railing. For this deck, I'm using 4x4 posts set directly into the frame below the deck surface. With all of the posts installed, I can now start marking out their locations on my picture frame. This allows me to notch it out so it slides around the posts, giving a seamless look. Okay, so it took a few extra minutes having to pull out those posts to put in those uh, picture frame around the outside, but it's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with this stage, so the next thing to do is to actually start putting the railings themselves in. So you'll have noticed throughout this entire deck build that I've used spacers to keep my spacing between either different sides or between boards identical all the way along. And when I'm building the railing, it's really no different. I'm using spacers to space it off the deck surface for the bottom rail. And then I'm using a second set of spacers to keep the distance between my top rail and bottom rail identical all the way along. The final piece of framing for this railing is a top plate. It's going to sit on top of that top rail as well as on top of all the pickets, and it serves a few purposes. First, it covers the end grain of all the pickets to stop moisture from absorbing through them. And second, it's a nice place to rest against or set a drink on if you're entertaining on your deck. With the frames complete, it's time to start installing all of the pickets. The first step here is to find the center, and that is going to be the location of the first picket. From that initial picket, I start working my way outwards towards each post. Once again, you'll notice that I'm using a spacer to keep everything perfect and evenly spaced from picket to picket. The final piece of this railing is some post caps. Not only do they look good, but they help keep water off the end grain of those posts. And there's the deck. At least, minus stairs and the skirting. It's looking pretty good. I was also given some feedback a few videos ago that I do not show you guys enough of a finished product at the end of these videos, so even though the deck is not complete, I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks a ton for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.